Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of semiconductor engineering. I'm over at FlexLogix with Ali Cheragi, who's going to talk today about transforming an AI model for accelerator chips. Ali, what sort of challenges do you run into when you're trying to take an, an existing model and really transform it? Basically, when we are working with deep learning models, there are two phases, right? One phase is a training phase, and the other phase is inferencing on the edge, right? When we're working on the training phase, we are working on floating point data. Why? Because of the wider range. But this floating point data, when we want to run it at the edge, it's going to be very slow. Why? Because it's floating point. To increase the speed, basically, we need to transform or change this floating point into some extent integer point. Why? Because it can increase the speed. It can reduce the power. And at the same time, it can uh, reduce the amount of uh, memory usage. To do that, there are some processes that can happen in the middle of the path. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Swali, how do you get there? I mean, what do you have to do in your hardware, and how do you make that work so that it's really efficient? Sure. Let's say you're a customer. You come to me and says, OK, Ali, I have a model. I trained it. It's fantastic. It, the, the accuracy is great. I want to run it on your hardware. Uh, the, the suggestion that I would tell the customer is that, can you share your Onyx model with me? The, let's say the customer says, sure, I will give you the Onyx file. And they have some form of accuracy that they like, right? They share their model with us. At the same time, I will ask the customer that, can you uh, also share some type of calibration data with me? What is calibration data? Calibration data is a subset of the training data that we use at the training time. So, they actually need to share some of their data with us. After they share the data with us, I'm going to run their code into two different, two separate actually processes. Let me draw the process for you. You're a customer. You are going to share your Onyx model with me, right? And you give me the calibration data, right? Calibration data. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run, use these two information to calculate some type of statistics. Uh, calculate statistics, right? And then, based on this statistic, I'm going to estimate or calculate some scale value. These scales could be based on tensor or could be based on channel. You may wonder what is tensor, what is channel. The data that we have, for example, may have 32, bit, 32 different channels, right? When we have 32 different channels, if, if it, we want to go for the tensor-based basically quantization, we are going to consider only one scale for the whole 32-bit channels. On the other side, when we are working on channel-based quantization, we consider 32 different type of scales for this 32-bit channel. In other words, each channel has a scale value. So we calculate this scale in this step. Then what we do, we actually give these scales to each of channels. We assign them to each of these channels. So this is not just a simple cutting and rounding of the data, right? No, it's not. There are some computation, mathematical computation happen behind the scene that basically we do at FlexLogix. And this computation, by the way, can happen in two cases, two different areas. It can happen during the time that you're training a model, what, uh, what we call it as training ever quantization, or at, at the end of the basically training, which means that you train your model, you have the model, you pass your model to me and says, now I have everything ready, I want Ali to run it, and I want it not only fast, but also I want it to be as close as possible in terms of the accuracy to the original model. So that's the reason that this process becomes very difficult. So it's not just basically rounding numbers and you know removing some stuff. Because if you do that, then the accuracy will drop to some extent. So after we have this scale and assign this scale to, to different channels, the last step is the preparation and quantization of the model. So we call the whole process, the whole process is a flex logic process that we done here, we do here. The other flow that we follow is not just the quantization. We also do something called optimization. When we're talking about optimization here at FlexLogic, we're not talking about 
pruning or sparsity, these type of things that can change the models to some extent. We are not changing the model. Customer's models, in our perspective, has to be intact. We are not change their models. However, there are some possibilities that we can combine two operators in a deep learning model without changing their mathematical value. One of the things that people keep bringing up when they're looking at efficiency in AI is what is your accuracy rate? You mentioned accuracy there. How do you play with that as a variable? Uh, the thing about the flow that we have here, we are not, we, our goal is to get as close as possible to the accuracy that the customer gives us. Let me give you an example. If a customer gives me an object detection model, right? We are measuring the accuracy using mean average precision or average precision, right? For example, let's say you give me a model that the mean average precision is 50%. My goal is to get 50% and not worse than 49%. That's my goal, which means that only less than 1% drop. That's the whole goal of this quantization, which means that I can run your model as very fast, faster than FP32 or 16, and at the same time, I keep the accuracy as close as possible to the, to, the, to the model that we give. This is a whole different way of looking at the problem, though, from what we've seen in the past, because in the past, when you, you weren't thinking an AI was always, we need 100% accuracy or, or very close to that. Now we're coming out with, what's good enough for the application that you're trying to work with, right? Yes, yes, different application has different type of requirements. Let's say if you if you want to put an application self-driving car, you want to detect all the humans outside, right? So if the quantization 1% drop could be a big deal, right? So but when you go for, for example, for another model, which is trying to, to detect a thief or somebody who come to your door, okay, 1% is fine because you may not detect the person far away from your door, but when they get closer, you can detect it. So that it completely depends on the application that how good accuracy you want. So what else can you do to speed this up and also to lower the amount of power that it takes to run it? So again, uh, except this quantization, the other one was optimizing, optimizing the model, which basically, again, we are trying to combine operators. And instead of having 50 layers, suddenly you can actually drop them or decrease them to, I don't know, 35 or something. How to do that? Some of these operators, basically, when you combine them mathematically, is they are similar when they are separate. So we know we detect through the process that we have. We know these operators. We detect them, and then we combine them together. And that's what we call it as optimization. So there have been a lot of AI chips over the years. Where have people gone wrong when they're trying to implement this, and, and what's changed here? Um, one of the most important, important things that we do here is the quantization step. Quantization step is a skill, is some type of expertise. Not many companies outside can do that job. At FlexLogix, uh, we can basically have, we have expertise in terms of the quantization. Again, we can do the quantization, we can help the customer to quantize their model while they're training their model. Or after the quantization, we can actually provide some tools these tools, based on the customer, it could be completely black box to them, which means that they don't have any idea about the AI. They just have a model. They want to run it on our chip and say, that oh, we don't know. We just want to run it. So in those cases, we have a very simple flow. This flow just take the onyx and calibrate the data, and the rest is done. So which means that we are quantizing, optimizing the model, and then we give the output to the compiler that we have and the compiler basically generate the bitstream that we can upload to the hardware. Some other customers may want some more advanced type of features. In those cases, we can also help them. For example, there are cases, there are customers that they had models that were not quantized very well. In those cases, we actually help them and we improve their accuracy when they worked with us. Ali Chiragi, thanks for a great explanation. Sure.